Shalom. <clears throat> First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, number one, the city apostles, bishops, elders, and Akim of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Ayar Skabar from the GMS Virginia camp coming at you with another show lesson that I pray that you find edifying. So I'm just leaving the plantation and uh, and uh, and you know the spirit told me to do a lesson before I rest up and have to do it all over again tonight but nevertheless the work has to be done. And, um, you know, I was talking to a few Jakes at the plantation and, uh, as well as a few heathens, you know, and when the Lord say that he shall come as a thief in the night, he's going to hit these people as a thief in the night. These people don't have a clue over here in Babylon, the great whatsoever these people don't know anything about politics they don't know anything about the food situation the water situation the civil unrest they don't know nothing about what's going on in the world outside of their world you know and when you ask these people do you know what's going on you know, they're quick to tell you, nah. It's a lot. They're quick to tell you, nah, I don't watch the news. Because even the news has done a good job, in a way, by desensitizing the people to have them think that the news can't be trusted on any level. And it can, you know. Truth be told that the news can't be trusted. But now the people don't know what news to listen to. So they just cut all the news off altogether without gathering any or some information as far as what's going on in the world. What's going on in their environment? What's going on in their local community? These people don't have a clue. And when these calamities hit, a lot of people are just going to be out back, you know? A lot of people who are not of the elect will not be protected in that day. Now, again, the elect will go through stuff, but far from the level of the things that the non-elect are going to go through, you know? In other words, you might have to leave your house. Well, the elect might have to leave their house, you know, be pilgrims upon the earth, you know, and totally, well, not might, might, but they're going to have to totally depend upon Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and everything. And that's one of the benefits of being of the whole for elect in that you have something to look forward to when no one else does, you know, anyhow, let me grab some scriptures and I'll go on. Um, the book of Second Nedra, chapter 16, you know, I'll start at verse 37 and grab a few other precepts from there. You know, like I said, this isn't going to be a law. That's a Talakia. Oh, Talakia, you know, like I said, I just got up the plantation. The book of Second Nedra, chapter 16 and verse 37. And it reads, Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. Everything that Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai said that he would do, he's doing it. And he's doing it right before the people's eyes. Both, both, um, you know, in front of the elect, in front of the two thirds, and in front of the heathen. You know, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is making his presence known in the earth. But a lot of these men, man, man, oh man, a lot of people just don't believe it. You know, they just can't see it. You know, 
they actually think that Babylon the Great won't crumble. You know, I mean, you, you know, you do got some of, you know, you, you jakes that are starting to catch on, you know. But for the most part, a lot of you jakes, you know, the up and coming calamities, you, you know, as far from your thoughts, as far from your mind. You know, you, you know, you pre, you know, you people are preoccupied with bullshit. You know, you're preoccupied with being preoccupied on shit that you're going to be able to possibly do tomorrow or when you get off work or when you, you know, stop work, you, you, you know, you're off the weekend or whatever. You, you, you know what I'm saying? You're preoccupied in everything other than prophecy and your how about me, I was shy. You know, and that's going to that's going to get you destroyed. You know, there's a lot of people don't even a lot of people don't even believe that the Lord is real. You know, a lot of people don't even believe that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is even real. You know, and when you listen to people talk, you know, so-called Christians talk. You know, a lot of them have actually turned their back on the scriptures. You know, and you actually hear him say, well, that's a white man's book. That's this book. That's that book. You know, I'm into this now and I'm into that now. Why? Because on some level, it's tangible. On some level, a lot of these jakes have, 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 you know, like abandoned the scriptures and adopted something that's tangible, you know, Something that they can hold, idolize, trade, transfer, look at, you know? And what did the Lord say in the book of Judges, chapter 10 and verse 14? Run and cry, run and cry into the idols that you have, or run and cry into the gods that ye have chosen. And let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. So a lot of Jakes don't even believe in what's coming. And if you don't believe in what's coming, how can you possibly prepare on what you're going to go through? A lot of people are about to get fucked up, bro. A lot of people are about to get messed up. The book of 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is not slack concerning his promise. What promise... Did the Lord make? You know, he promised salvation is only for Israel. He promised that he would deliver his people. He promised that he would destroy the enemies of his people. Beginning with Esau, Edom and the other nations. Esau, Edom is the only nation that's going to be totally destroyed off, off of the face of the earth. After a thousand years, but. You other heathens are going to have to go through your shit, too. Because you were in cahoots with Esau Edom. You know? Yah Bashim Yahweh Shai promised plagues. He promised death. He promised pain. He promised famine. He promised wars. He promised all types of things. And those... And those promises that Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai has made are coming to pass in front of the people's eyes, but the people don't even see it. They don't believe it. They think that the Lord is slack concerning his promise. Here it is. The, mid, the Midwest is being hit by snowstorms and rainstorms and tornadoes and tempests and floods and this, that, or the other, but these motherfuckers blame it on Mother Nature. You know? Yahabashim Yahweh Shai isn't even a thought. Because they because they can't possibly believe that the God of Israel, the power of Israel, could possibly do these things. So they look at the works of Yahabashim Yahweh Shai as being slack. As some men count slackness. And these motherfuckers are looking at the works of the Lord as being slack, but that's only because they don't realize that the Lord is doing it. Once they realize that Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai 
is bringing upon the earth all these calamities, then it's going to sink in. Then they're going to try to get right. Then, you know, they're going to try to turn to the Lord. Then they're going to look for the prophets. Then they're going to seek shelter. Then they're going to beg for forgiveness. Then are they going to even consider the fact that they were even Israelites from the beginning? But at that point, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. Here it is. You have all day to do what your father told you to do before he got home. Your father told you to wash the dishes, you know, and mow the lawn to do whatever. You know what I'm saying? Before he got home. Knowing damn well that your father did not play. Knowing damn well that if you disobeyed your father on any level, you was getting your ass whooped. So you wait until the last minute and you fall asleep at the last minute. Then, then your father comes home to uncut, uncut grass, dishes in a sink, or whatever he told you to do, not done. And then now you're wondering why you're getting your ass whooped while you're waking up. Because you didn't do what your father told you to do. Well, you have a shimmy, I was shy, ain't no different. He ain't no different. In fact, you have a shimmy, I was shy is more strict than these fathers these days. Because you have a shimmy, I was shy is not a respect of a person. He told you to do something, you're going to do it, whether you like it or not. You could go kicking and screaming. You're going to do it. And if it's your time to die, you're going to die. If it's your time to make it through the day, you're going to make it through the day. If it's your time to eat, you're going to eat. If it's your time to drink, you're going to drink. If it's your time to do whatever, you're going to do it through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem was shy, period and point blank. So, you know, you, so, you know, you people... You know, you keep looking at the Lord as being slack, you know, concerning what he's going to do to the ungodly. You people, you keep playing with the Lord and, you know, you start thinking that you're A-OK. -okay. And a lot of people, a lot of people think you're A-OK, -okay, but you're not. You're about to get fucked up on a level that you've never even seen or believed. Here it is, this devil is sharpening his sword down, down, <laughs> down from grandpa to the grandson who's seven. They sharpening that sword, bro. The death of a lot of you jakes is going to be a fucking recreational sport to a lot of these Edomites. Because they don't hate blood. They don't even cringe at blood. In fact, they eat the shit. They drink it. They bathe in it. They snort it. Come on, man. These fucking people live for the hunt. And what do you think you Jake's going to have to go through during Jacob's trouble? You know, you ain't on ease level when it comes to his blessing. You ain't on that level. So you're going to have to depend on your high boss, Shem Yahweh Shai. You're going to have to depend upon the Lord protecting you in that day. You know? Because he's not slack concerning the fact that he said that he would, you know, he will fight for you in that day. You know? Yahweh Shai said that he was in Michael. Michael. The great prince to stand for the children of Israel. So who are you gonna believe, the Lord or men? Because remember, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is different when it comes to what he say and what men say. Men are slack. Men are sit. Men are sit back in at a timeline on Monday and change that timeline. To another date or another time because he's slack. But how about Shim Yao Shai ain't slack? You people keep playing around if you want to. You know? But at the end of the day, the Lord still has his men out there telling you people what's coming. 
what's coming. You got prophets out there on the highways and byways all over the place telling you what's coming. You know? And it's not like it's a lie because you can look it up for yourself. But even then, you people are just lazy. You know, you don't research information. You know, you people want other people to just give you the information and then you bite off of that. And that's the wrong way to be because that's that's exactly why you're in the situation that you're in. Because you solely depend upon, you know, this bullshit news instead of going out and doing your own diligent research, you know, to find out if what what the men of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is, is saying in terms of what's coming and what happened and what's to be. You people don't even consider that. There's a lot going on in the world today. A lot. And, and, and the famine of the word is upon you people, man. Chess moves are being made amongst men through the spirit and probably how by Shem Yahweh Shai, of course, but Chess moves are being made amongst men to bring about prophecy. And your prophets are out there on the highways and byways warning and telling you people of what's happening and what's to come. But you still don't listen. You know, Isaiah chapter 53, or verse one, who have believed our report? Who's going to believe what the prophets of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is telling them? Who? Well, the only one that's going to believe is the elect. We know that. Or should I say the hopeful elect? And so that's why we strive, you know, to be more and more like Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. That's why we strive for, for the truth. That's why we strive, you know, to make sure that our calling and election is sure. We strive for that because I'd rather be on this side of the line than on the other side of the line where there's no hope. And where there's no faith, you're just destroyed. You know, Hashem Yahweh Shai said, shall he find faith on earth? A lot of you people are just going to lose it. You're not going to have anything. You're not gonna have no substance, you're not gonna have any merchandise, and 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 greater of all, you're not gonna have no faith. Now we know that faith is a gift given by Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. But there's gonna be a lack of faith in the earth. Because it's gonna be so chaotic out here, it's gonna be so destructive, and a death toll is gonna be so tremendous that a lot of people is just going to lose hope. They're going to lose more hope when they see these calamities and the Lord isn't answering their prayers. They're going to really lose hope then. Because Yahweh Hashem Yahshua said, <laughs> they shall seek me early when they're getting their ass whooped. Paraphrasing, of course. When, when, when Jake is getting their ass whooped, then they're going to seek the Lord early. As Jake always does. You know, going back, you know, to the father who, 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 who told you to do something and you didn't do it. Now, all of a sudden, you want to get right when you get your ass whooped. Actually, Jake. <laughs> Even before Jake gets his ass whooped, he's crying and saying he won't do it no more. But it's already too late because you shouldn't have done it the first time. You know, and that's why we have this, this, you know, this beautiful gift called grace and mercy. That's why we have these. That's why we have that beautiful gift or these beautiful gifts. Grace and mercy. To get right. To prepare for what's coming. Because what's coming, a lot of people are going to sit back and say, I'm not ready for this. I can't deal with this. 
let me jump off this bridge or jump out this window or jump off this building or do this or do that to myself. Here it is. You got videos and, you, you know, I, you know, I brought this out in the last lesson, of course. But here it is. You got people offering themselves. And I'm talking about Jake's. So if we're strong people and we commonly don't offer ourselves, imagine what, imagine what the other nations are going to do. They're just going to fall apart and just go, go straight psychotic. It's going to be crazy out here. Going back to this, the book of Second Peter, chapter three and verse nine. But as long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's what the law wants. That you come to repentance. But he knows that two thirds isn't going to do that. Two thirds of you, Jake, are just going to straight up rebel. Even when you're getting your ass whooped by these calamities, you're going to rebel. In which case, you you know, quite honestly, you need to be put to death. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 2 and verse 16. It's a lot. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 38. As when a woman, as when a woman with child in, in the ninth month bringeth forth her son with two or three hours of her great pains can pass her womb. You're at the beginning stages where the pains are starting, you know, to come past the womb of you, Jake's, because now you're starting to recognize that painful shit is about to happen. You're not feeling the pains yet. Not on a level that you're going to, but you're starting to feel the pains. You know, you're starting to feel the crunch. You know, you're starting to feel the bite of not having a, enough money to buy enough food that you used to buy a year ago by not having, you know, you know, the economical means, you know, to go out and splurge the way you did a year ago by not having the comforts that you had when you had money a year ago by not having certain comforts that you're used to. You're starting to see those things dwindle away. You know, you're starting to see these things flee from you. You know, so you're at the beginning of these birth pains. You're at the very beginning of these of these birth of these birth pains. But if anybody ever seen a woman in birth, man, when it comes, it doesn't stop until that child is delivered. And I get it. Um, which pains when a child coming forth, they slack not a moment. So when these birth pains Fall upon you, Jake's. It's not gonna slack. Not a moment. It, it, you, you, hey, bro. It's just gonna hit you as a ton of bricks. It's gonna punch you in your face. It's gonna slap you in your mouth. It's gonna whip your ass. You know. It's gonna knock you in your head. It's gonna trip you to the point where you're down and you don't know how to get up. To the point where. You're going to be so destroyed that you're going to actually start to think that your best decision is just to stay down and go back into slavery by taking the MOTB. It's going to get sick. And trust me, a lot of you Jakes are going to bend the knee. A lot of you Jakes are going to take that karagma. You're going to bend the knee. And when you do, ain't no turning back. You know? Verse 39, even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth and the world shall mourn. The, the world of Israel is going to mourn. Now, now, granted, you know, this is going to come upon the entire earth, you know, Israelites as well as the heathen. But the world is going to mourn. The world of Israel is going to mourn. It's going to mourn. And sorrows shall come upon it on every side. So there ain't, <laughs> when it starts to happen and it's happening, it's only going to get worse. It's going to get so bad, man, that, that already you start to see 
the love of many waxing cold. Verse 40. O oh, my people, hear my word. Make ye ready to thy battle. Prepare your minds for what's coming. Be as a good soldier. Look at things as if you're on a battlefield. Be circumspect. Be wise, but not as fools. Pay attention to what's going on. Don't, don't, don't be like two thirds. Two thirds is just out there. You know, fuck them, let them be. But to the whole four lack, pay attention. Even pay attention to these two thirds because even a lot of them are watching you. Because there's something about you that's different. There's something about you that's sparking an interest in you. There's something about you that's making them want you. So you got to be even circumspect of them when you're about your day to day. Trust me, these demons can spark a righteous or a a watched spirit or a good spirit, I should say. I mean, granted, there's none good but Yahweh Hashem Shai, but you know what I'm trying to say. These these demons can spot spirits that are not like them, unfamiliar spirits unto them. I say that, you know. Oh, my people, hear my word, make ye ready to thy battle. And in those evils, be as pilgrims upon the earth. Be ready to go. Be ready to move. Don't depend on shit. And when I say don't depend on shit, I mean don't depend on your women. Don't depend on your money. Don't depend on your cars. Don't, don't depend upon your substances. Don't, don't, don't depend on that shit. Just go. Go. You know? Just go. You know what I'm saying? And if you've really been thinking about it, then you're prepared to go. You know? Let me see if I want to read any more. I'll read a little more and then I end it off. Verse 41, he that selleth, let him be as one that fleeth away. Yeah, so if you sell something, don't, don't, <laughs> don't look to make a profit on that shit. Let it go. And, and he that buyeth as one that will lose. Your money ain't worth shit anyway. You know, lose that shit, you know. I ain't a day, you know, I mean... I mean, you know, I think the point's been made, you know, a lot of people are going to sit back and say, I'm not ready for this. I'm not prepared for this. Where did this come from? How did this happen? Who who let this happen? Where's my help? And 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 a lot of people are going to fall upon Esau Edom. A lot of people are going to look for this devil, which is the man who's doing it to you for help. But the elect of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai will lean upon Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And I pray that I am one of those men. But a lot of people are about to get fucked up. So with that, I'm going to end the lesson off there. And, uh, you know, I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, Hashem Akkad Kodash. Double honors to the apostles, bishops, elders, and Akim of Great Millstone. Peace and salutation unto the elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother, Ash Kabal from the GMS Virginia camp. I, and I pray that you find this lesson edifying. Adawan Ratazah. Until the next lesson, wa shalawam.